Welcome to a day in the life with the iPhone 16 Pro Max. We are starting bright and early at 6 a.m. I've got a packed day ahead, including a special creator event hosted by Best Buy in Toronto. Let's get into it. As I'm getting ready at home, let's talk about this beast of a phone. Coming from the iPhone 15 Pro, the 16 Pro Max is noticeably bigger at its 6.9 inch display. I've gotta say, it's a bit of a challenge to slip it into my pocket, especially for my morning walks, like today. Honestly, even if it's for 15 minutes, I try to get a morning walk in every day. I'll be honest with you guys, for daily use, the Pro Max isn't the most practical. It's actually kind of too big for comfortable one-handed use. Sure, there is a one-handed mode, but it's not the best implementation out there. But man, this natural titanium color, it looks absolutely stunning. I was actually on the verge of getting the Desert Titanium. Although the Desert Titanium looks really nice, I think the Natural Titanium suits me a lot better. I think this is a better option for everyday, and honestly, I case my phones all the time, so the color doesn't really matter a whole lot for me. But if you want to show off the color of your phone while keeping your phone protected, there is an option out there for you. And this portion of the video is sponsored by Moft. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you may be familiar with Moft products. Moft continues to find innovative ways to bring functionality at a very high quality. Meet the invisible case. This is for those who don't want to take away from the original look of their iPhones, but want to keep their device protected. This case is slim, supports MagSafe, and has very precise cutouts. And you may be thinking that clear cases are easy to turn yellow. My past experience with Moft is that their products stay true to their colors. I remember this from my white case on my 15 Pro. And this is the Movas leather case that comes for the 16 series as well. This case feels premium and has a very nice feeling in hand. Just like the clear case, it offers precise cutouts and protection. For today, I'm gonna go with the invisible case and snap tripod wallet. Yes, one of my favorite phone accessories now has a wallet feature. This is how versatile the snap tripod wallet can be. It's great for recording and setting up the camera effortlessly. Best part is that we now have a wallet sleeve. This is really cool. I'm gonna slip in my driver's license and some just in case cash. I don't wanna carry around a wallet today. So this is my setup for the day. All right, time to hit the road to Toronto. Usually it's an hour drive, but with today's traffic, it took nearly two hours. And here's a challenge for me. I'm not charging the phone until I get home this evening. It's gonna be a busy day, so let's see if the battery can keep up. Just getting into the city, I have to find a parking that is close to the event space. At this point, there's still an hour to the event. I had a lightweight jacket zipped up to protect my white t-shirt. I'm pretty bad with white, so just changing into a light cardigan, it's a bit chilly today. Grabbing a coffee and a small bite to eat, and then I'm gonna head over to the event space. And like usual, I'm paying with Apple Pay. There's about 40 minutes until the event. I'm kinda running ahead of the schedule today. I kinda gave myself extra time for the traffic. I have to say, again, size-wise, the 16 Pro Max is gonna take some time to get used to. Of course, I'm also using my Apple Watch Ultra for quick maps and always tracking steps as well. I do wanna cover the Apple Watch Ultra on a separate episode. If you have any questions, do let me know. Now, I'm at the Best Buy Creator event, and I've gotta say a huge shout out to Best Buy for putting this together. They're always at the forefront when it comes to latest and greatest tech. While the 16 Pro Max is the star of the show today, I couldn't help but be impressed by some of the Asus laptops on display. Of course, I had to take a look at the ProArt P16. What a capable laptop this is, and it promises a lot for AI as well. There's also the PZ13 that is a two-in-one laptop with a detachable screen. The PZ13 actually runs on the Snapdragon X series processor. Now back to our iPhone 16 Pro Max. Throughout the event, I found myself reaching for it quite often to capture footage. I only brought my Sony FX30 with a 16mm lens to keep things simple, so iPhone really came in clutch for those tighter shots. I know I mentioned before, but I've gotta say it again, ProRes Log, which has been around since the iPhone 15 series, is a game changer. The footage blends seamlessly with what I'm getting from my cinema camera. Like this is unbelievable. And a new feature that we need to talk about is the audio mix. Have a listen to it. So, it's kind of loud in here. I wonder how this... But there's no way I can actually isolate this with an actual microphone. So, we'll see. I wonder what this sounds like. Can we mix the audio on this? I don't know, is it too loud?
Wrapping up the event, there was a lot to see here. There was a cool panel that we got to listen to about AI and met some cool creators as well. Vespa is sending us home with a bunch of tech that I will probably do videos about. Okay, that's a nice watch. I know we talked about the video capabilities, but what about the photography capabilities of this film? Especially with the wide angle lens now featuring a high quality 48 megapixel sensor. And let me tell you, it's not about megapixel count. A good sensor is crucial. Think of it like this, high megapixels without a good sensor is like putting a 150 horsepower engine on a Porsche. It just doesn't do justice. So the megapixel count and the sensor quality goes hand to hand. Before we talk about the mainly controversial camera control button, let's dive into my camera settings for both video and photo. Have a look at these. I'll walk you through my video settings which are quite straightforward. I choose to film at 4K 24 frames. On the bottom settings, I specifically prefer to have the HDR setting off as I think it looks a little too artificial on smartphones. When it comes to formats, I have the most compatible under camera capture. ProRAW is on with ProRAW Max format. And under video capture, I have the Apple ProRes with Log ticked on. There's also photographic styles that I don't use. I prefer to use RAW mode to capture photos and then edit them my way in Lightroom. But honestly, if I wasn't into editing photos, I would really appreciate this feature. This is cool. Now let's get into the camera control button. You know how we refer to a great design as it looks like Apple made it. This camera control button slash function does not feel like Apple made it. Or we say, it just works about Apple products. The camera button does not just work. Horizontally, it's hard to reach. Vertically, the screen is still easier to control. And the button functions are kind of weird to get used to. Instead of this button, if photography is so important, why not add more manual camera controls on the app itself? Action button that was introduced last year was a lot more functional and easy to use. Even though I don't like the camera control button right now, I think Apple is doing a lot for those who choose the Pro models for creative features. I can only see it getting better. Like the audio mix is a huge underrated win this year. And things are looking great for those who do want to learn photography and videography or for those that need a tool that is compact and will get the job done. As we're wrapping up the day and grabbing a bite to eat, let's talk about day-to-day -day performance. For tasks like social media, emails, or photo editing, this phone is an absolute beast. The new A18 Pro chip is probably more powerful than last year's model. But to be honest, for my use case, I haven't noticed any performance issues since the iPhone 11. I think the Apple system is the most easy to use out there. Now, is it the best? That is questionable. But the 16 Pro Max is the new lead of my Apple ecosystem. Let's talk about the display for a moment. The Pro models support 120Hz refresh rate, which honestly should be the bare minimum when it comes to any phone these days. The peak brightness is also impressive at 2000 nits. On an average sunny day, it's been more than bright enough, no complaints there. At 4.30 p.m., I'm sitting at 48% battery life. I will give you a last battery check at the end of the video. I would have loved to talk about Apple intelligence that this phone was made for, but as you know, it's not here. Instead, what makes this phone feel new is the iOS 18. I'm gonna wrap up the day in the city, head back home, and then we'll get into my favorite and hidden features of the iOS 18. Another two hours on the road, Toronto traffic, love it. You know what they say about Toronto. Toronto is the city where you're an hour away from Toronto even while you're in Toronto. Does that make sense? <sighs> what a day today was. It was a very motivating and inspiring day put together by Best Buy today. Um, there were a lot of things that I personally took away, especially when it comes to AI and the future of content creation. But yeah, I'm very, very motivated. Big shout out to everyone at Best Buy Canada for putting this event together. It was really fun. Now, this event kind of drained my battery. I'll be honest with you. I'm sitting at 20% at 8.40 p.m. I left home at 7 a.m. today, did not charge at all, took some photos, took a lot of videos, a lot of videos in ProRes. I exchanged some footage with Alex. I was on my phone today, taking notes, looking at things. It was an active day on my phone. Now, 20%, Coming from a 15 Pro is pretty good. If you are coming from a 15 Pro Max, let's say, this won't be a big difference for you, but coming from a 15 Pro like myself, it shows, it really shows the difference. So I am happy with the battery life of the Pro Max. 
for now. You know, iOS updates, heavier applications, less storage space, these are all things that affect the battery life of a phone in the long run. So I'd be curious to know where it goes within the next couple of months. I'm gonna go charge up the phone, I need some power, and then we'll dive into other topics about the 16 Pro Max. I almost said 15 giving the phone a quick boost, then I do want to mention some things about the iOS 18. Listen, I know, the Android users are making fun of Apple users for getting customizable homepage in 2024. But congrats everyone, we can now change the tint of our icons and have more freedom on our homepage. Now, I do like that we're able to change the icon sizes from this menu rather than going into accessibility settings. I personally will keep my homepage as the original Apple look rather than changing the colors. That's just me. Next thing I do like that the apps are now organized under an apps menu. This keeps things very organized. I like that. As I'm walking through the menus, I will bring attention to the fact that we now have RCS messaging. You can take this on under the messages settings, but I'm pretty confident that it comes on with the iOS 18 now. Another big thing that Apple has brought in with the iOS 18 is the widgets. If the app of your choice comes with a widget, you can now turn them into widgets. That's awesome, right? I'm hoping that widget availability will expand in the future as I think there are still some apps that need to show up. But right now, there's quite a bit available. For example, I'll turn my Gobi light bar into a widget. And now with this, I don't have to shout at Google at 2 a.m. in the morning or look through the app to turn off the light. It's just on my homepage. Now, let's talk about some hidden features and features that are not so talked about. My favorite and most satisfying feature of the iOS 18 is the new flashlight. It's so cool and useful. You can now expand and narrow down the light beam to your liking and needs. When recording a video, you can now pause recording and continue to record if you want to combine the recording into one clip. This is great for those who want to record retakes. With this, you can just combine everything into one clip and not end up with a bunch of other clips that you need to delete after. For those who get motion sickness, there's reduced motion mode. To access it, type in motion into your settings and you'll see it. And did you know that you can actually set vocal shortcuts as well? Find it in your settings and set it up. You don't need to ask Siri simple things like this. Turn on the flashlight. We left. It's been a couple years I miss you today. Thank you for watching my day in the life with the iPhone 16 Pro Max. These videos are a big effort to make and seeing your support as a result makes it so worth it. Thank you Moth for sponsoring a part of this episode. Thank you Best Buy for bringing me over to your creator event. And lastly, the biggest thank you to those who continue to watch my videos every week. Thank you so much for watching. It has been a pleasure. I'll see you in the next one.